Okay, so in previous session we have discussed about the mucosal surfaces, we have taken the gut and we have taken the respiratory tract. Okay, in this uh, and we have discussed about uh, uh, antimicrobial enzyme that is lysozyme. So I will continue this uh, antimicrobial peptide and their function. Okay, and then I will talk about the um, the microbiological or microbial barrier. Okay. So there are uh, uh, various uh, uh, proteins uh, like a uh, defensin, cathelicidine, histartine, and uh, basically all these uh, proteins are uh, produced in inactive form, in pro form. Okay, and uh, these proteins, uh, uh, upon activation, they generate kind of uh, amphipathic uh, antimicrobial peptide, which has a both uh, uh, polar and non-polar region. Here you can see amphipathic, and here you can see that alpha defense in which uh, has a pro region, and when it will be enzymatically cleave, then that generate uh, active uh, uh, alpha defense. In, okay, and this uh, pro region is short in case of uh, beta defense in, uh, and this uh, upon cleavage it also generate the amphipathic. Uh, beta defense in. In case of ca uh, cathelicidine, there will be a cathelin uh, uh, domain and there is a, some pro reason which is again cleaved and then it will generate uh, amphipathic uh, uh, active cathelicidine uh, peptide. Okay? And it is true for ragli or lacticidine uh, for a protein. And, uh, Basically, this uh, overall, once this uh, amphipathic uh, peptides will be generated for for all these cases, like uh, defensin, okay, uh, different defensin, cathelicidine, and uh, lacticidine. So after this, uh, this amphipathic uh, peptide, basically, it will be attracted towards the microbial uh, membrane system, okay. And once it will be attracted to the uh, my, microbial membrane, it will basically go and deposit in such a way that it will make a pore. Okay. So here you can see uh, um, this this mechanism. I will show. Uh, okay. But uh, before that, uh, I just want to say that defensin has a uh, uh, three uh, three members. Uh, there are three subfamilies. That is alpha, beta and theta uh, defense in and these are distinguished based on the amino acid sequence. Okay? So there are three major uh, uh, subfamilies of defense ends, okay? and each family member has a distinct activity and some are being active against uh, gram positive bacteria and some are uh, active against uh, gram negative bacteria and some are playing important role against uh, uh, fungus they have antifungal property and how it works uh, as i have explained you they are attracted towards the membrane of a microbial pathogen it could be a bacteria gram positive negative or fungal membrane and then they are deposited in such a way that they will create a hole okay here you can see so this is electrostatic attraction uh, and the transmembrane uh, electro, uh, electric field bring the defense in uh, to close to this membrane and uh, lipid bilayer of the microbial pathogen and it will be deposited in such a way then that uh, it will make a kind of pore here you can see. So this is the way by which uh, defense in act okay it's it's a quite a uh, common for other uh, uh, peptides also. There are some more uh, antimicrobial protein and peptides. Uh, let me explain. Lactoferrin. So, lactoferrin is a, uh, is a protein which is uh, predominant in uh, breast milk. Okay. And the key role of uh, lactoferrin is to sequester the iron ion. Okay, and 
they are quite potent against viruses, means they have an antiviral activity, they have antifungal activity and antiparasitic activity as well. Okay. So, so this lactoferrin is a, um, uh, basically sequestering iron okay, from the microbes, okay, microbes or microbial pathogen and then, uh, so, so in order to, um, so once the iron will be sequestered from these uh, microbial pathogen, then their activity will be significantly reduced. Okay. So, they have a basically, in bacteria, they have a basically uh, bacteriostatic property. They stop the growth of uh, bacteria and the bacteria to encounter this uh, or to overcome this problem, they have a variety of mechanism by which they can get the iron in order to maintain their uh, multiplication or growth. Okay. So, they have a uh, like a sidrophores, which is iron binding protein, this is in bacteria. So, this sidrophores basically take the iron and keep it with uh, them and slowly they will transport inside the cell in order to protect from this uh, uh, lactoferrin uh, thing. Okay. So, this is a, a very interesting that uh, how this bacteria keep iron. Okay, by having this protein, sidrophores. This is one way. Another way is that uh, they will develop some kind of receptor, okay, which will specifically bind with the iron, they will, which will attract the iron, okay, and then they will transport inside the cell in order to maintain their uh, uh, cellular activities, okay. In gram negative bacteria, this, uh, this has uh, some bactericidal. Uh, activity as well. Basically, it binds with uh, lipid A. So, lipid A, if you remember the lipid structure, uh, uh, sorry, LPS structure, not lipid. If you remember the lipopolysaccharide structure, there is a one reason known as a lipid A. And this lipid A, uh, uh, basically, uh, it, it, is a, it has a quite a strong um, immunogenic property, okay, among whole lipid. Okay. So, in, in case of uh, gram negative bacteria, this uh, lactoferrin can bind with the lipid A and uh, uh, somehow they will disturb the outer membrane and then they can kill the bacteria as well. Okay. There is a, another protein known as uh, azurocidine. It, it has uh, also antimicrobial property and chemotactic, uh, this is a chemotactic protein and having uh, some uh, serine protease activity. It is also synthesized in inactive form, okay. And uh, upon activation, they, these serine protease activity get activated and uh, they, they basically break down the proteins of the target uh, uh, entity, okay, that is anti, uh, the microbes, okay. There is a bacterial permeability inducing protein. So, this is a, the name itself is explaining the property. Okay. So, once this protein will bind, then this will, uh, this will um, in, in enhance the permeability with uh, uh, various ions. Okay. There is a, basically this will disturb the permeability overall, if you see carefully. Okay. And in that way, there will be a loss of iron, loss of nutrient, and then there will be a uh, death of microbe. Okay. There is a vitamin B12 binding protein. Uh, it seems it plays a very important role in uh, uh, in in antimicrobial activity. Okay. So some microbe may need a vitamin B12 for their growth. So, vitamin B12 binding protein is also playing a very important role uh, as an antimicrobial uh, peptide or protein. Okay. And uh, this is um, basically also sequestering the vitamin B12, okay, and which is needed for the microbe to, to replicate. Okay. Now, I will talk a few more biochemical barriers uh, and uh, 
which I have discussed in great length in neutrophils. So, I will just quickly move on to this, uh, this uh, slide. So, there are uh, reactive nitrogen species, you know, there is a nitric oxide which is, um, which is produced in the cell, okay. There is a, uh, basically it is synthesized uh, by nitric oxide synthase and using arginine. And there are nitrogen dioxides, there are peroxy nitrite. So, all this, uh, uh, this makes a hostile environment inside the phagocytic cells, okay. And how this, uh, um, this is uh, synthesized, basically this uh, superoxide uh, uh, ion react with nitric oxide and then this peroxy nitrite is synthesized from nitric oxide, the nitrogen dioxide is synthesized, okay. The right, uh, reactive oxygen species also present in, in these phagocytic cells and this is superoxide anion, there are hydroxyl radical, hydrogen peroxide, hypochlorite anion, okay. And there is a, this is a, this superoxide anion is produced uh, by the action of uh, NADPH oxidase. I have discussed in a great length in previous session, so I will not explain anything more. That will generate the superoxide anion. And by the action of superoxide uh, dismutase, this hydrogen peroxide are uh, synthesized, which react with uh, chloride ion and then this gives uh, uh, hypochlorite anion, okay. And all these species, uh, the, these reactive nitrogen and oxygen species are uh, uh, very potent antimicrobial or it, it can react, you can know, you, you know by the knowledge of chemistry, they can react with anything and then they can destroy. So, this is a, one of very important uh, uh, kind of biochemical barrier. Now, I will move to the microbiological barrier and this, this image is uh, quite sufficient to explain uh, whole microbiological barriers, okay. Here you can see there are, uh, uh, there is a huge number of microbes present in different region. Here you can see there is a, in mouth, there is a big amount of this Fermi cutis. Uh, this is a family of uh, uh, microbe. And it is not only present in more amount in mouth, it is also present in esophagus, uh, stomach and colon and vagina, okay. And this make, this constitute a huge amount of biomass as well, okay. And another is, a, there is a bacteriodates and actinobacteria and protobacteria, okay. So, so what is this uh, Fermi cuteus? So, basically this is a commensal bacteria, which is a basically species of lactobacillus and clostridium, okay. And that constitute uh, such a huge mass, okay. It is present on skin also. Another is uh, this uh, bacterioid fragilis, which constitute uh, another big mass of uh, bacteria, that is bacteriodids, okay. And the third one is actinobacter and actinobacter is a bephilo, uh, bephido uh, bacterium species and this, this also present in quite good amount. If you see very carefully, it is present in huge number in skin, okay. There is a uh, protobacter, basically this is a E. coli species and uh, their number is more in esophagus and stomach and uh, quite less in colon, okay, and uh, vagina also and mouth also, but, but uh, they, these are also present. So, it is very interesting that E. coli is present in our body, okay. So, these are the basically commensal uh, bacteria and uh, you know, if, uh, if this commensal bacteria are disturbed by taking antibiotic, then that will disturb the whole uh, gut system, okay. So, that is a doctor prescribed probiotic along with uh, this uh, antibiotic, okay. Another thing is that sometime due to some, some uh, immunological problem, our immune system start reacting with uh, uh, 
these commensal bacteria okay there are so many reasons uh, it's a huge huge topic okay so so in that scenario this uh, there will be a the individual will develop an inflammatory bowel disease okay and this inflammatory bowel disease is quite complicated it's it's a really very um, uh, uh, painful disease okay so they whatever they will eat then uh, there will be a, some some pain or cramp and all those things okay and this uh, there are so many inflammatory bowel disease one is crohn's disease okay so over there this uh, uh, this this basically in that scenario this uh, anti the immune our immune system is start reacting with commensal bacteria and that creates a problem okay so this is all about the microbiological barrier and uh, uh, with this i will uh, stop uh, here and in next session i will take you in great length about the pattern recognition receptor which is a uh, quite a huge field uh, which is recently discovered and if you remember my previous session this work also received the nobel prize okay if you remember there are two key workers who received the nobel prize one is bruce butler okay and another is a uh, Uh, Julie Hoffman in 2011. So we will discuss uh, uh, their work as well as we will discuss the work of uh, uh, two major uh, uh, researchers that is uh, Ruslan Medjitov and Shiva Akira. So uh, I will not take the precise work, but I will give you overview about the pattern recognition receptor, and we will discuss uh, every family of pattern recognition receptor. Okay. Thank you.